If there are questions that you have that wasn't addressed in the epilogue, um, feel free to ask me. But like I said, my answer could be, it's whatever you think it should be, or it's whatever you think happened to this person. That's, that would probably be my answer, but you're welcome to ask it anyway. So. <laughs> <clears throat> I guess my question would be, did, uh, how much did Hark actually change your stuff? So how much of it were you surprised about your own, the, your own character's entries? I was uh, I was surprised by the Clefairy, the Clefairy <laughs> stuff at Molly and Alicia's wedding. Inevitable. <laughs> Inevitable, and also with uh, Pim Pimple, uh, Pimple and Jefferson joining Ooze, uh, <laughs> joining Ooze team. When people wrote out what they wanted to see, I tried to, ma I tried to keep as many of it as much as possible and maintain it as long as it didn't mm -hmm. conflict with other things. So many of your epilogues were written word for word of what you sent me with just a few okay. tweaks. Um, Cause I didn't want to deviate from it unless I absolutely had to. And I think I kept most everyone's intact. So. Your chain is like so chill it's like <laughs> yeah so we had like the opposite for the guy that chased like, us from our fans, be like i should have to work for this guy like, surprising the neutral the the terms of the contract so this wasn't me this wasn't hark being like okay i'll try to give you guys a happier ending like i when um in the moment when we had that session session 23 or i don't remember which session i think it was either 23 or 24 when um, the contract appeared in front of Noir and Chase, actually. That was my intention of what would happen when you signed the contract because it was really fun seeing all of you like, oh my gosh, you guys are going to be a slave and it's going to be terrible and you have your, all these obligations. And I'm here thinking, no, that's not what it's going to be like at all. <laughs> but you guys are welcome to think that if you think that's what's going to happen. So it was always my intention not just when I was reading, writing the epilogue. It was always my intention that, given the way that Noir expressed um, what happened and why she did what she did, it, it did sympathize with her. And it, as a god who's supposed to uphold the law of death, he had to do something as a punishment. But that doesn't mean that that the punishment has to be as harsh as some of you guys were imagining it to be. And I think that I knew that whoever signed the contract, Giratina was gonna make it a point to not disrupt that person's life as much as possible. Um, so it was really easy for me to write that epilogue um, for, for Noir. Cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was surprised knowing that Anthony decided to really go and meet the Adelphin family. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> like, I feel like Charlie... Charlie's really happy about that ending. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not perfect. It's not the long-lost brother he... It is, in a way, but he's very content in what he has right now. Anthony can be the the kooky, crazy uncle in their <laughs> sitcom oh, family. Oh, come on. He does, does love cookies. <laughs> he does love cookies. Anthony is basically the sten of the group. <laughs> you know, um, nice. I don't know if I actually voice those thoughts but Cricky and I were uh Cricky and I were joking at some point that Anthony if Anthony did attend the wedding he would probably just be there for the cake. <laughs> Honest yeah probably. Well at least that's what he will say. I'm sure he will say that. Deep down inside he might be there for more than just the cake, maybe. So. I feel like I feel like almost everyone's um, wedding is going to have some Clefairy par party crashers, just, just because. <laughs> By association. Just because. By association. Yeah. Bullet, yeah. dog, shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Sweet, wholesome family. <laughs> Nobody ever asked any of the Clefairy why they needed their firstborn to be brought to them. <laughs> Nobody ever asked, which is perfectly fine by me. Well, we, I... never, we never saw them after, yeah, after that point, did we? Yeah, that's true. No. And like yeah. Molly only learned about it once they were gone. <laughs> yeah. So Molly never asked. But that's okay. Well, it never asked. More, I think it's more interesting that way. Never <laughs> Oh, well. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I hadn't sent anything in for Bullet, so interesting to know what he got up to. Good for him being happy and stuff. <laughs> um, and because Cassie never got all the plates, I didn't expect her to actually be able to contact Arcea, so that was a surprise too. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, originally right. you asked about this in Discord. I'm like, well, Tiffany would trade you, but she wouldn't straight up give you the plate. I know. Lux you, yeah, actually you had wanted to hold on to Black Team Plate too, so when that popped up, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I didn't ask. Like, I didn't want to influence anyone's decisions because, as you said, your characters would have done certain things. Um, so I was just assuming mm -hmm. that that was like a gone possibility. But yeah, that, that's not yay. That was that was something that I ended up putting in because a I thought Riz, I asked Riz hypothetically if you were to summon Arceus, what kind of questions would you ask? And I thought the que that questions she asked were interesting. And I thought it would Thank be you. nice to actually show Arceus answering those questions. And B, I thought it made sense to tr attempt to end the campaign with as much hope, at least, or as much opportunity slash option to start building some sort of reconnection with Cassie. And I felt mm -hmm. that this would be a good gesture as a as a, I think as I wrote, um, show of good faith, despite- yeah. Come home, we miss you. Despite <laughs> what um, Lux or anyone else originally felt about the plates at the end of session 25. I thought that would be, that would make a little bit of sense going, moving forward, um, so. So wait, did you message people and they agreed to give up the plates? <laughs> Or did you just be like, surprise, they're gone? I waited surprise. to see if I, so the honest answer is I waited to see if anyone was going to mention their plates that they had in their possession um, oh, in their okay. epilogue. Okay. And since nobody mentioned anything in their plates of possession, I'm like, I'm just going to take creative liberty on this. So I since did. they weren't seen so. as like necessary to anything you were trying to accomplish. Right, because I specifically told people, give me the top like three things that are most important to you. And if the yeah. plates gotcha. were not the highest three priorities, if that wasn't the most important thing to you, then I thought it might be okay to have some creative liberties with that. And as long as I at least got everybody's top three most important things as a compromise, I guess. Cool. Um, just so I could well, make then, things work in the episode. Then I hope that people are content with how it turned out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> If it gets Cassie back on speaking terms, yes. We'll see. Yeah. Right. Maybe when we see yeah. you again in the next six months. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <Maybe. laughs> yeah. I'm going to head count in that, like, also, like, that Tiffany note, like, it was also, like, a little note. Hey, uh, um, don't worry. These people close to you weren't brainwashed. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, that's <clears throat> awkward topic. <laughs> I like yeah, she might care about that. I like to imagine I like to imagine the misspelled letters that probably probably she probably she probably just ended up drawing a comic instead of, instead of writing. Cool. Yes. After writing Dear what? Cassie as it's spelled in the chat. Yeah, yeah, they never did. They never did get to have their lessons. Oh. Oh. What well I don't know, it's it's not too late, I think. Um, one thing that I so slightly related to Cassie and Nevi actually, and I, I was going to write something about this, but I wasn't sure legally what would actually happen. Um, I was wondering, since the Kearneys um, were disgraced and were sent to jail, they technically don't lose their estate and their, they don't technically don't lose their estate, correct? 
or does it go to their next oldest person? I don't know how that works. Because I think legally they still own that property, even though they're in jail legally. I I think think that... I think they own it, probably own it still, probably. Because I feel like that would be just too devastating for people going to prison. Yeah, and just lose their You know, if like everything you had worked for was taken away or whatever. Because otherwise, I think at least during the three years they're in, that they're in jail, their mansion estate is just not going to be used. (laughs) Unless, unless, but I, I think technically, technically, um, um, the two kids probably still have a key to the estate. So Nevi at least has the key to it. So I wasn't sure if if they would move into the bigger house or not. I mean, with Cassie's money, she can just probably buy all of Pewter City. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't specify anything of where she would live. I just figured as long as she was with her mom and Nevi, like that. Or invited Nevi. Um, she wasn't going to force anything. And Pooter is now Pine City. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, considering considering her her invention and the profits from the invention, mm-hmm. and then her becoming a member of the Elite Four, I'm pretty sure Cassie is fairly well off. And it'll be difficult for <laughs> anyone in the team to not know what Cassie's been up to. It'll be very yeah, easy probably. for you. <laughs> to know how she's doing, and she's doing fine. <laughs> she's a Tony and, Stark of the universe. She's a Tony Stark. <laughs> of the and meanwhile, Annie's a PTA mom in Alola. Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist. With her bald head and tattoos, she's yep. the favorite. Plot twist, Cassie asks, you know, the president Bo over, you know, for some tea, and then you know, while his back is turned, she shoots him in the back. Okay. Plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to spoil that. <laughs> that, that was season two. <laughs> <laughs> Set it off with a bang. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. One question. Noir comes, o- comes over and she's like, ah, Cassie, now I have to clean up for your, your me- the mess you made. <laughs> Takes out her sight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bo, where do you want to go? Oh, which gate do you go to? <laughs> I guess you're alright. <laughs> In all seriousness, is there a possibility for a Pokemon season two? I don't know. I don't want to. I I I don't want to say n- absolutely not, but I also don't want to make any promises this early. So, so the possibility, okay. yes, but just not any certainty. What I will say, though, okay. if you're looking end game wise. My current plan, and this is an if I can get to that point, because that is what I would like to see happening. Um, my 10th year anniversary or my 10th campaign is going to be, this isn't actually what the plot's going to be about, but I'm referring to it as the Infinity War campaign, where it will involve all of the previous characters from every single campaign that I have done the nine previous years, for those of you who are interested in participating. so. Um, I'm sure all of you will be invited back for the 10 year anniversary, which will probably also be the last campaign I will ever post on my YouTube channel, maybe. Um, or at least I'll take a break. <laughs> maybe a long break at least. Um, so in fact, there are a few things in this epilogue that are setting up for that 10 year already. Um, wow. And- Who knows after that you could just be a player in some. Maybe, maybe. I heard Shay and um, several other people have started GMing or have GMed in the past. So Riz could also. Have you GMed yet, Riz? Um, hardly. Hardly. <laughs> nothing, nothing that I would say gives me enough experience to actually do it on this scale. So far, I have GMed one session. <laughs> yes. 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 At this point, any of you guys really should consider GMing. If you haven't I already, I think you I all agree. would be great at it. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, that's just me. A few of my guildies have showed interest in an actual World of Warcraft campaign, so I'm I saw that. Slowly, I mean, yeah, if nothing else, if nothing else, it's good to get that perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think this was was this campaign number five or four? 
feel like this is campaign number five for me. Five. This is campaign five. So we're already halfway. So. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. No, four. four. Two Dragon Age, one Mass Effect, Pokemon Two Dragon Age, four. one Mass Effect, Pokemon four. four. All right, so Mass, the next one's going to be five. Cool. <clears throat> we got plenty of time. Luck. <laughs> plenty yeah. of time. <laughs> five to six years away. <laughs> what time? So, uh, back to things that weren't addressed, if you don't mind, real quick. Yes. Uh, Lobel Trenton. Yes, good question. Are they okay? <laughs> uh, Lobel Trenton <laughs> are okay. Dead. Lobel Trenton are okay. Um, Trenton will have a new child. Um, I Did you already decide what gender the child was going to be? I think I, I left it open. You left it open? All right. I, I, for, I, I, that was another detail that I wanted to leave open as well. The child will be born. I left it open as to what the gender and the name was because we already have... The epilogue had a lot of babies in it, and I didn't want to <laughs> add more than I absolutely had to, so I decided to just keep that open. But yes, Trenton and Lobel are, are fine, and Lobel, now that he no longer has missing no in him, um, will actually begin having a far better relationship with his kids. Um, well, I think a, lo a lot of the core <laughs> stuff with Lobel um, is still there. Like, he's still ridiculously, like, organized, and he's, you know... Um, Tiffany can still mess up his day by, I'm just moving everything on his desk two centimeters to the right. Trust me, right. it'll drive him nuts. <laughs> yes, but you notice that he is not as uptight as he was before. He's still uptight, but not as much. So, good uh, five centimeters now. Good question. I mean, could there really be enough babies? Could there really be enough babies? No. <laughs> I mean, most of the babies come from us. Well, Charlie and Annie, you guys are like, you guys have a giant. You basically should start, you know, building an ark for the flood with the number of children that you have. Yep. Well, I, I two of each Pokemon. <laughs> Any wood, honestly. Yeah, I, I figured out it all started like, hey, how many children do you want to have? I want ten. <laughs> and just, and just looking at each other like, yeah, no, actually, we're going to have ten children. <laughs> Well, it started uh, off with six, and then it turned into ten. <laughs> yes. <laughs> many, ch many children. Many children. <laughs> Most of them adopted. <laughs> Including Pokemon. Yes. Exactly. Ooh, Equal opportunity here. I guess he's got a bunch of new Pokemon which he made by playing God. <laughs> Like, yeah, so Fern has new friends now. Aww. Like, you didn't get to know that. But yeah, Fern has new friends. Yes. Her old friends missed her, though. Of course. She misses them, too. I mean, this wasn't addressed, but, like, if they weren't busy doing something, I'd imagine Cassie would be okay, like, if Nevi were to go off and visit, if Fern wanted to go with Nevi. Because, you know, Fern is her own woman. She's independent. She can do what she wants. Yes. They decided that even before humans and Pokemon were equal. So, Aww. yeah. It just depends on how much Fern, I guess, wanted to stay exactly like Cassie said at all times, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because like, it does definitely like seem her huge... loyalties there. So like, Fern wanted. Huge... Oh, sorry. I was gonna say if Fern wanted to join the Dreamcatcher. She was welcome to it. It sounds Yay! like. It sounds like. Us. <clears throat> Probably like wouldn't join the Dreamcatchers. She'd be like consultant. Like, oh, hi guys. Hey, <laughs> 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 <Okay, me." laughs> She's. <laughs> She's the morale booster of the group. Yes. <laughs> she's the Mei Ling. I want her. She's the Mei Ling of the group that you can just call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this sits back and just like, does Pokemon, Pokemon paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and these coal packs when they get injuries. Yes. Aww. And the, <laughs> one thing that I love about uh, Andy's epilogue is that she ended up being like the polar opposite of her mother. Yes. Like yes. she, her mother was just like the the career woman that was out doing all the stuff. But Annie was like, "No, I'm not gonna do that." Good for you. <laughs> yes. Now I'm just seeing just 
Charlie or Annie calling people like, hey, we might need a babysitter. <laughs> oh, yes. No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Kyle, future. <laughs> Wait, uh, have you guys seen Fuller, Fuller House? I have. It was uh, like <clears throat> uh, Joey's family. Yeah. I picture them like that. <laughs> With the tons yeah. of children. Well, Joey's kids are... <laughs> mm, Joey's kids are a piece of work, I have to say. <laughs> piece well, of work. They probably won't be exactly like that, but they'll be, like, crazy hyper. At least the twins will be crazy hyper. Sure, they're all sugar-fed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, considering Charlie's... <laughs> considering Charlie in general, yeah, they're probably sugar... <laughs> How is uh, Charlie so thin? <laughs> Does he just not eat anything just, that he bakes? I'm just really, really bad at drawing, like, different body types, but he has a, a little bit of pudge, so... Okay. Because there's a saying goes, never trust a skinny chef, or never trust a skinny baker. <laughs> exactly. That's funny. exercise in the, in the bakery. I own a bakery. You're or not, I know, I work at a bakery. <laughs> Uh, and you are up like all the time that you're working, so. So maybe that's how you burn off those calories. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, one more thing back into Pokemon, real quick. Yes. Was Sniffles able to be on Glitched? Yes, especially with actually Sniffles was one of the uh, main um, motivation for uh, Madison's work to unglitch the Pokemon. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Because, yeah, Tiffany would care. He is her adopted son now, just like it was her son. <laughs> Poor boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else that wasn't covered? Chase, I made some changes with your epilogue. I didn't know what your thoughts were on the changes I made with yours. I don't know if you wanted to tell them what the original, what you originally wrote, or, uh, or you just want to keep it to yourself for now. It's up to everyone else. I mean, it's it yeah. was at the end of the day, it's just say sure. Is so, Ella, Ella knows, I think, um, what I the know, intention awesome. was. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I it's not an easy out. one. It's tied to a lot of gaming history, so you've, you, you almost had to have been part of gaming in the 90s. I didn't know if Hark was, so I didn't know if Hark was picking up on the pieces. I didn't know how long like he's been gaming for. Um, but it's it was tied to a setting in Dungeons and Dragons in the early 90s called Planescape. Uh, and the idea of the multiverse being a thing. Uh, and I associated the multiverse from Planescape to the Harkiverse that of all the campaigns Hark is building. And so the idea that Chase on a meta level, like he was getting signals from somewhere that he wasn't moving on like a Steven was, but he was just, he was starting to learn to just accept that he doesn't control like who he is and that he's trying to listen to something that's, that can move him forward to finding out the truth of the black city. The black city was Sigil, which was the center, which was the center city at the middle of this infinite disc of planes. And it was atop this one spire and at the top was this grime filled city. So that was the blackened city. And that also associated to the blackened city in dragon age. And then, so it's more like he was playing on the idea of symbols there, not exactly on, not on exacts. So it didn't matter to me whether Planescape stayed as the thing, but that was the driver behind, behind, just so I can get my thoughts straight of like how I was associating things. The Lady of Pain, like the idea why he liked pain. The ruler of the Sigil is a, is this kind of godlike creature called the Lady of Pain. So that was where his like cutting himself came into play and stuff like that. So. Bye, Riz, by the way. Bye, Riz. Thank Bye, Riz. you, Riz. Love you. Take care. Oh, no. Um, so, yeah, very subtle stuff. And I didn't anticipate Hark would accept any of it. But I wanted to <laughs> put it out there because I wanted Hark to then come up with something that was in parallel to the idea uh, without me being in control of the idea itself. So, um, And they did. And I was completely surprised by it. So, You're being too nice because what I think what I actually said to you was, this isn't going to work. Maybe you're just crazy and you die. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, said, that's I read it Because he actually said, oh. he, he wrote this very elaborate oh. thing, and I'm reading it. And then he says, oh, the option is he just really was was crazy, and he, crazy. he ended up dying. And then I, so I just responded to Shay, and I said, Shay, I have to be honest. I'm reading your epilogue right now. 
and I just don't know what to do with it. I was like, I honestly don't know what to do with it. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe at the end of the day, some people are just crazy. <laughs> maybe. But we talked it over. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe I've... Shay really was, Chase really was nuts the entire time. And I was okay with, I was, yeah, I was okay with either of those paths, honestly. It, it, like, it would have just, it was, still would have been his story to just believe in it so much right. that he would have sunk into the earth and died. And that would, that would have been the Chase story. Um, but then I thought about it more. And then, then I thought, oh, wait a minute. Duh. Wait a minute. And then I wrote what I wrote. So, oh, uh, did did you guys like both choose like the NFA name? Yeah, like, oh, I had no idea what Hart yeah. created after he said he's okay. not going to do what I. Everything that happened, everything <laughs> that happened to him right after he went through the mirror, because there was a part where he read through the mirror. We went through a mirror. Everything after that, I wrote. He didn't know any oh, about cool. any of that. Not the room with all the books, and not the mm -hmm. familiar cover. The one book that he recognized and the familiar cover and things like that. So, which, hint for which, next season? Which didn't get explained. The TV's about ready to go through? Uh, not, hint for not next season. Hint for not <laughs> next season is what I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Well, if you yeah. think back to your Dragon Age season two, you did hint at it in the epilogue with the mm. Pentaview seal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, hence my asking. Yeah. You are crafty like that. You are. You are very. You are. You are thinking in the correct. You're. 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 You're in the right frame of mind. You're thinking along the right correct lines. Have to happen it's, eventually. Yes. And so, take 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 my answer. Interpret my answer however you want. When I say not next season, and that'll be that. <laughs> So, so the, when we do the crossover, I have to do mm -hmm. the character sheet for locks. <laughs> Human yeah, locks. I was going to ask Human that locks. next. So how do we? How how is the crossover going to? I yeah. mean, I don't want you to spoil anything, but well, uh, you can private message us later. Yeah, but I mean, no, how does that just happen? You can ask me. So, that. so how? So in the crossover for Mass Effect is yeah. in, uh, as far as we know, eight years have theoretically <laughs> passed. These eight years will have theoretically right? passed. Yes, it'll be eight sure. years okay. in the future. Oh Correct. lordy! By the time we get to Infinity War, those of us in the earlier campaigns <laughs> are going to be aged. Your grandchildren. Maximilian's <laughs> <laughs> just going to come out on a walker. That's <laughs> my sword and shield. Let's go. <laughs> Well, keep in mind that we're not jumping 10 years between each campaign. So this will probably be the biggest jump. This 10-year jump is probably going to be the biggest jump. And everything else will probably be in succession. Eight. <laughs> it's eight had eight for... opinions about turning 30. She's not ready to turn 40 yet. <laughs> it's eight for you. Eight for you, 10 for Dragon Age. Oh. Or 10 for Mass Effect. Because think the campaigns are happening in the same, or in parallel. Timeline. Right. Timeline. So, eight for you, ten for either Dragon Age or Mass Effect. I don't remember which of the two, but I think it's ten mm -hmm. years after for Mass Effect, for Dragon Age. So right, <laughs> right, because there's two years in Dragon Age. I think there's two years. Mm -hmm. So ten years now in Dragon Age for the next season or now, as whatever I, the next. As I said, like I have a master chart where I actually have all of the campaigns timelines laid out in parallel, so I can see what's happening in each universe even though you don't necessarily see it on camera i know like years Just. i have years charted out this year equals this year and this world which equals this year and that world i already have the harry potter and that and and dragon age season three timeline in already so i already know how that fits into everything. someday there will be a bonus video of all of this stuff <laughs> and i am looking forward to it it's very complicated <laughs> especially yeah. because i'm setting things up now for across the next five campaigns basically wow <laughs> i'm excited for harry potter now <laughs> well if you audition good luck with the girl Wait yes to that. audition <laughs> please yes i have plans i'm so I excited to see your character concepts <laughs> yes. i mean one of the long talks we've had before doing our <clears throat> our scenes was about the the auditions that were the upcoming editions where we're talking like going back and forth with character concepts for the Mass Effect and the Harry Potter campaigns that were coming out. Aww. Yeah. I I can safely say that Vito changed a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It was 
not you were much different exactly then. <laughs> what you told me, but I was like, oh, that's different. Okay. <laughs> the I'm, I am excited about what characters people will come up with for the Harry Potter campaign because I am, one of the things I will tell people is that I am looking for at least one muggle in the party, at least. Because um, it would be interesting to see wizards and muggles working together. Very similar to um, Fantastic Beasts. It's going to be based more on Fantastic Beasts type of storytelling versus mm -hmm. The Harry Potter storytelling where you guys are in school, which probably isn't going to be that big of a thing. The other thing is, I will probably say that um, there are so many races in the Harry Potter universe. You've got centaurs, you've got goblins, you've got ghosts, you've got, you know, um, I, I don't remember. There's, there's tons of different races, and so it'd be really cool to see people roll characters of all those different races as well, and not just humans, human witches and wizards. <laughs> Oh, it'd be so cool if like someone rolled up like a squib because like imagining squib. Like, growing, <laughs> growing up in the wizard world that's like oh you don't got magic right mm. <laughs> it's like you know about it but it's like <laughs> yeah um and in case you are wondering right now i am planning for the first session to take place on the same day not in the same location but on the same day as the <laughs> epilogue of book seven when harry and his family is on platform nine and three quarters it's mm. going to be happening like on that day mm. is the plan okay. so that'll be really interesting okay. cool I mean, since i actually got in for the mass effect campaign i can just like my character concept for harry potter i, I just i had so much fun doing it also you can still make a fake audition i'll definitely like be people. doing a fake audition <laughs> Maybe somebody could steal the idea. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I can inspire other ones. Wizard that was inspired really, idea. That's the proper way. Inspired. A French wizard that was really, really inspired by, uh, I guess, sea, uh, the sea paintings, or also Kiki's delivery service because the flying bike uh. is the thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the aesthetic. Like the guy just dressed in summer clothes, like ready for the beach and just flying on a flying bike. And is that character going to channel another 80s movie? My name is E.T. <laughs> e. So you have Indiana Jones for your current character, and then the next character, you're going to be Elliot from E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I guess I have a thing with movies, do I? I see yeah. something in a movie and I'm like, oh, that would be a good character concept. And then I go. Delivery services counts, yes. Yes. Anything else before we close for the final time? It's been fun. No one wants. Just deviously awaiting for the Harry Potter. <laughs> well, I think it goes without saying, I'm going to miss you all. Um, it's been really wonderful yeah. spending time with you guys for the last year. Um, and many of you I had known prior to this or had, had, like I said, had conversations prior to this. So it's really cool that we're actually hopefully have bonded more since then. Some people are you completely new, you know, like Shay and Roma, for example. So it's really cool getting to know you guys as well. Um, because part of the part of the reason why I pick the people who I pick is because I think you know they're just really cool people to become friends with. It's like I just thought yeah, Rome, Rome is a cool person to become friends with. So yeah, and she is, there. and she is, and stuff like that. Follow her on Twitter. She is amazing. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys, and I hope that you will continue to keep in touch on Discord, um, and and uh, yeah. That's all I have to say. Thank you.